have a serious discussion about the type of descendants you've been catching lately. The first descendant has been out for almost a week now, and despite the tumultuous start, people not getting Twitch rewards, horrific drop rates, people not getting their paid for currency, accounts getting overridden for attempting to connect their main platforms to Nexon, long server downtimes, and optimization so poor it's frying PCs, for those who have been salivating eagerly for their Energizer Bunny Stellar Blade knockoff, it has been nothing short of a religious experience. But what about the gays? What about the girlies and the girls and the theys? Well, look no further, for I give you... With the ability to produce an unlimited amount of chemicals from his body... Ha <laughs> ha! Who's sniffing my nutsack? He knows exactly what he's doing and his target audience has been reached. It's lit. S mode is huge. Fire emoji, wet emoji, gonna get all the eggplant emoji. Boom. Now, if you're like me, seeing this cocky, armpit sniffing, beefy, bearded, scarred, and tatted man was more than enough to get me barking on all fours like a feral cat in heat. Add on his title of explosives master, and frankly, the memes write themselves. He's giving himbo, gym rat, and a healthy dose of bad intentions all rolled up in one. If dudes who look like they'd shove you into their sweaty pits and brag about how much they stink are your cup of musky tea, then this is the descendant for you. But is he actually any good? Full disclosure, Essimo is not an early game descendant. If you plan to play him from the beginning, you will have to buy him. But is that a good idea? costing 900 of the premium currency that roughly translates to 20 USD. Are you down bad enough to make that choice? If you're not sure, don't worry. This is why I am here, for I made the oh-so-noble sacrifice to open my wallet and test him out. This is Asimo in the Early Game, a review for the LGBTQIA community and the girls, gays, and days and fairies that would be down bad for a musky, musky man. Fuck out my way when you see me. Everything Acimo does is based around his RK ability to create chemicals and his obsessive love of explosions. Two of his abilities allow him to create bombs, his first and third. The first ability has a max stack of five, and is a sticky bomb with a delayed explosion that can be cast onto a target or the ground. The third ability has a max stack of three, and is a deployable landmine. The landmine has a much longer lifetime and radius, and latches onto the first enemy to step into its range. It cannot be cast in the air, and will leave you momentarily rooted as you cast. His second ability is Remote Detonation, an ability that directly combos with the first and third ability. This blows up all attached bombs on the field with a stacking damage effect. It should be noted that Landmines, his third ability, only count towards this number after they've latched onto a target. In Asimo's fourth ability, he becomes the bomb itself, running in a straight line for a set duration before detonating, and granting him a madness buff for a short time. This ability has a long wind-up animation, which leaves him vulnerable to damage, and can be cancelled by hard CC. It should also be noted that the Madness buff debuffs his armor. Asimo is a descendant that excels in high damage to an area or a single target. He's fun and can fit on almost any team because of the secondary nature of his damage. He also has a solidly high defense stat. If you're a player who focuses mostly on grouping with others, he'll be a solid addition to any squad. However, he has a lot of downsides as well, some of which become readily apparent when playing solo. By default, he has high cooldowns, low ability duration, no CC, and very spammable abilities making him run through energy at a higher rate than other descendants. He's also extremely reliant on positioning and timing, as pretty much all of his damage has a delay to it, either from the fact that you're setting it off manually, or because you're waiting for bombs to recharge. 
It's also really easy to misplace your bombs by having them overshoot targets, making you waste precious damage and making his burst a bit inconsistent. By himself, ACMO struggle with a lot of the early game content, since much of it is a variant of defense. This becomes less of an issue later on, and is why he's much more of a late game descendant, especially from a solo perspective, when he can unlock a special ability augment that allows him to taunt. Without that though, he oftentimes finds himself overwhelmed due to his damage getting too spread out, or from losing defense with his ult. The high cooldowns and energy drain also make him more reliant on gunplay than most of the starters, which may mean you have to invest in them earlier than you would otherwise. In conclusion, if you are someone who is playing the first Ascendant with a bunch of friends and just wants to have someone that they can all sniff, then great, have fun. He works incredibly well early game and beyond with a party. If you are someone who just wants to get them for your own personal pleasure, then be aware that he will struggle by himself. And I would suggest starting with Ajax so that you have a, another descendant that can easily carry through the early game content missions when ACMO inevitably makes you angry because he keeps dying. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to leave a like and comment down below, and I'll hopefully see you on Twitch.